Rabbi Klein was one of the most beloved and extraordinary men I've ever met. He had an incredible, profound faith, particularly following the atrocities, the tragedies that he personally experienced. He had an amazingly contagious smile. He had an infectious warmth. He touched the lives of everyone he met with his optimism, his cheerful spirit, his amazing commitment to Torah and to mitzvot, his desire to inspire everyone he came in contact with. Even though tonight is a tribute to Rabbi Klein, it would really be impossible to only think about Rabbi Klein without mentioning his Rebetzin Elka. Elka was his life partner. They met after the camps. They established a life together in America, in Canada, then America. They went through everything together, and they always had the most close-knit, loving marriage and relationship that most of us have ever seen. I first met Rabbi and Rebetzin when I started working here many, many years ago. I, and I thought that she was the most regal woman I'd ever met in my life. The way she held herself and as kind and caring woman as she was. And Rabbi, Rabbi was the epitome of a rabbi, what, what you would think a rabbi should be. To me, Rabbi Klein represents everything that it means to be a good Jew. Not only did Rabbi Klein excel in his service of Hashem and his avodas Hashem, which is something obviously that I admired about him, but more than anything else, what I admired about Rabbi Klein was his ability to couple that with an incredible sensitivity and love for each and every individual. It's very rare that you see a person who could be on such a high spiritual plane but also care for children, give everyone he greets such an incredible smile. And to me, that was really what Rabbi Klein was, not just someone who was a rabbi and a scholar and someone who came to shul all the time and a religious personality in the community, but he was everyone's best friend. The amazing about Rabbi Klein was his almost unique ability to connect with people of all ages. There were older people, his peers. There were young children, three, four, five years old, who got candies from him every week, but didn't only approach him for that delicious candy, but it was his sweet smile, his gentle touch, that really attracted those young people to Rabbi Klein. Rabbi Klein was really, really nice. He gave up, he made everybody smile and gave out candy to the kids. We miss you, Rabbi Klein. He was everyone's best friend. You saw kids come up and ask him for candy. Everyone who walked by him, he gave a handshake. And to see someone who could both excel in their religious life, but also be so sensitive, Him. I know, and if a child didn't come up to him in shul, he went to them with a piece of candy or something. Rabbi Klein, we loved when he came to lunch basically every day for Shabbat. Rabbi Klein was so nice to us. When he came into our house, we'd all run over to him and try to be the first one to say hello. During our many Shabbos meals with him, he inspired us so much with his amazing Holocaust stories. We all miss him so much. We'll never forget him. Um, but when I went to Main Shul, um, I got an Aliyah. It was one of the very first Shabbos I moved into the Shul. And Rabbi Klein like came up all the way up to the Bima and he shook my hand and he says, What's your name? He's Shkayach, what's your name? And he introduced himself right away and he gave me a candy. And uh, I was immediately impressed with his enthusiasm and his love and his warmth. They partially through. He enjoyed that. I remember uh, one of them, uh, uh, he was 90 years old, and we went out uh, to one of the restaurants. And uh, uh, you would think that he would hesitate, but he didn't hesitate at all. He said, I'm 90 years old. <laughs> Another amazing quality of Rabbi Klein was just how humble and modest he was. He came to shul every day and certainly everyone knew him as the great Rabbi Klein. But it was only when I went to his home and you saw in his office that he built himself in his garage a wall that was filled with plaques and awards and recognitions that you came to realize the great man that he was and the legacy that he left, the impact that he left on so many. There were awards from every kind of Jewish communal organization. He had pictures. There, the, the, he met so many dignitaries and rabbis, and Rabbi Klein had this way of saying, my good friend Rabbi Lau, my good friend the Queen of England, my good friend the rabbis of the RCA. Everyone to Rabbi Klein was his good friend, and he was our dear friend as well. Rabbi Yaakov had such respect for all people. 
that uh, many times when we would drive him home uh, and David would walk him to the door and make sure the door was open and he was going in. And as David turned to go back to the car, there was, <laughs> there was Rabbi, Rabbi Klein right in back of him, walking him back to the car. And he would get very upset when he, we would say, go back, go back, we want to make sure you're in the house. Because he felt that that's what he should do, and he always did it. Ceremony. Uh, I invited Rabbi Klein and Martin Dudovitz to come and see the, the memorial privately. We saw it complete. Uh, and it was an emotional moment because I think the two of them looking at it, it, it was like a sense of an accomplishment that you really, it was tangible, it was, it was palpable. I will always cherish his greeting to me after Marif, Motse Shabbos in the lobby as we exited the shul with his gentle eyes and warm smile saying, have a good vach, Ida dear. Those words will remain indelibly in my heart. He gave people hope, he gave them faith, he gave them an optimism that things can yet get better as they did for him, even after all he had been through. Rabbi Klein, we love you, we miss you. You're a part of our memory each and every day. We'll never forget you and the impact that you had on our lives and our community. And I miss you.